Hello, welcome back to Leamington Station. Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you the basics of Anywhere. This will include setting your baseboard sizes, it will also include setting up your surface size, putting some track down, using a little bit of detail about flexi track, how to use curves and how to move the track around on the screen, show how to print it into full scale so you can print it out, put it on your layout and have a good idea of what your layout is going to look like. A lot of this footage was filmed a few weeks ago, it took me a while to get it all edited and sorted, so we'll pass it back to me a few weeks ago on the computer. And here we are on the computer. As you can see, I've got a completely blank canvas here. Um, and as you will see, I'll show you the sizes. It's 2.7 metres from there to there. And 120 centimetres from there to there. Each one of these grids is 10 centimetres. This is all set up through here on the settings tab just up here. Now, when you bring it up, it might be a different size. Obviously, you need to change those settings to however big your baseboard is. And then you can change this to however big you want your work area to be. Um, if, like me, you haven't got a square baseboard, then you make it by the longest lengths that you have. And then when you go into insert, you can add a surface from there. You can then just draw your surface out. Just a little bit, something like that. And then like I, I just clicked in every corner that I wanted there to be a corner. And then to finish, you right click. Now, if you ever needed to change this for any particular reason, and then you can just select it, right click, add a point, and then you can move that point up and down the line, and you can move it anywhere. As long as it's in between those two points there, you'll be able to move that point anywhere you want. A perfect example is, for instance, if I wanted to extend my baseboard and I maybe wanted to bring a full loop round and then bring back in a junction, then I could just put that point there and bring that point to there, or even bring that point out to here, just depending on how I wanted to do it at the time. As you can see, I have no track showing on this at the minute. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit here because you then need to go to track libraries. And then here is where you have all the different gauges. So we've got G, standard gauge, SM32, so on and so forth. But what I'm using is double O. So you click on double O, and then obviously you have the different makes of track. And we've got Backman, Hornby, CNL Fine Scale, Pico, Ecto Sale, and Triang. I'm going to use Pico Streamline Code 100. The reason for that is because select flexible track is in, in this one, which is what I want to go into a little bit of detail in. So we click on that one. Now that then brings up, as you can see here, the library of Pico Streamline Track. It's all code 100. If you wanted code 75, then you would just go back up here and then you would just choose 75. Now we've got all our pieces set up. What do we do? So, for instance, this is my baseboard. Um, and I'm just going to quickly put together the track plan that I've done. Um, I'm not going to put all the little details that I've put on like I have done on mine, but I'm just going to basically just swing it around, place it on and show you exactly how it goes. So the best first thing you want to think about is exactly where you want certain things to be. So I know my station is going to be in this top corner. So to start off with, you'll get a piece of track, which is I've just selected there, which is code 100 flexible track. Now that gives you a dead straight line to start from. If you wanted to do it slightly differently, there are other people that will select a point, for instance, like this one. They'll put it just off the screen, just like this. And then what they'll do is, as you can see, when you bring the poo pieces of track together, they actually create a little blue dot. So if you put that one to that one, it'll go to that one. If you move it down a bit, it'll go to that one. And then the same as if you were to come to the other end and do it that way. What they do is they do this because then that gives you a nice straight line to start with. So then you can put that there and it gives you that dead straight line to start. So then once you've done that, this end of the track, you select it. 
and then you can start to move it around and then as you can see it moves around and as you can also see if I get it really too close to each other you'll see it's got a red line in it that red line means that it is shorter than a second radius curve so all those little troublesome coaches and things that you've got and that could help with that I'm going to reduce this down a little bit in size and then I'm going to put a right hand point now if you look when you hover over each one of these it will tell you exactly what it is that's underneath I need a right hand point I'm going to use a conductive frog one so an SLE91 so I click on that and then as you can see it brings it up onto the onto the screen I'm then going to put that there and connect it up now I've done that you can actually just technically select this one right click and delete and then though you know those two are in a perfectly straight line because they started from that one though one thing you'll notice is that when you move flexible track points will stay static um, I'll just show you that again so for instance I've just moved that other one there now you'll see that the other end of this piece of track is now static so we'll bring this back straight in. so I brought out a left hand point I now I'm putting a double slip in which is this one here and I'll put that there then get another bit of flexible track I'm just going to reduce that down a little bit in size so it's not off screen when I put it over there and put it there and then I'll just drag that up to the end so now I know that that's going to come off there and I know it's going to come across here now this line's actually going to cross over this line so I need to move these down now if you select one you see it's just that one that's highlighted but if you select it and move it down the whole lot moves this little thing here which I will show you very soon but it also makes you able to rotate things I'm going to press undo because then that will put it back straight for me now I know this track here is going to come across it's going to come through another double slip and it's going to go into a point over on this side of the board that is then going to go into another point which is then going to be two sidings the next thing I'm going to do I'll select a right hand point and a left hand point I'll put the left hand point somewhere in about the right position where I think it wants to be and then I'll select the right hand point so now I will go to offer the two ends up together but because these are points you'll see that they just seem to want to connect to that one end now to get them to connect at the other end your best way is spinning around so then you then select this one and you pop it there now because this one is the one you rotated you should put this one onto this one because then it will make that one straight so now we're into this point here I need another double slip as you can see there this was actually an incorrect piece so we're going to press delete and we're going to actually put a double slip in there now as you can see those two lines if I zoom in a little bit using this thing in the corner you'll see that that's got a white dot and this one hasn't now the reason for that is because that one has automatically connected up because that's the one you dragged it to and that's the one that had the blue circle but this one hasn't now to get these to connect up the best way is select the part the piece of track that you want to connect to so yeah so you just drag it like that and connect it up so now we're, we've got these two pieces now I know that this is going to come out into another double slip so we'll put another one in there, oh I've double clicked that we'll put another one in there and because I know it's going to go there we'll pop it there now this track and this track are going to connect so I get a piece of flexi track I pop it on there now as you can see that will automatically put it in the right direction but it doesn't quite match up with this if I zoom in a little bit on this piece as you can see there are two little crosshairs now if you grab the end of the piece of track and like I was showing you before you'll see that those crosshairs move around one of them sort of stays static in the middle of the screen and the other one follows while I'm moving the mouse now the reason for that is is because you can remove you can move these backwards and forwards whence they're connected if they're disconnected then you can move them around but if they're connected then you can only move them in and out 
on this either reduces or makes the curvature harsher. So then I'm going to select this piece and I'm just going to pop it there. Now as you can see, that has now suddenly gone straight. Now if I bring that in or bring it out, you'll see it slightly makes a difference in the, in the curvature of the track. So if you bring this out, it will make it a very shallower curve, a, a longer curve. And then the same with this one. So if you bring them so they're about a quarter of the way, you'll notice that makes a very nice smooth curve. Right, I'm just going to quickly fill in some other pieces of track here. Um, and while I do that, um, I'll just fast forward it until we get to doing the corners. fiddle yard. On my track layout, I'm actually using Hornby curved points. So I need to go into here and select Hornby. And then I need three of those. And then we can get rid of that. Now the reason for this is because they are a slightly tighter radius. But all your coaches should still get through them. Should is being the operative word. So that's about where I want these points to be. Now I need to be able to connect this rail and this rail, and then I also need to bring another one around the inside of this to then bring off into three more branches. Sorry, two more branches. Which is what this point's for. Now this point will go roughly around here and this one will go roughly around here. So now we want a few pieces of flexi track and we'll start here. And pop this onto there and we pop this onto there. Now going to zoom in this corner so you can all see what's going on and as you can see that looks horrible so we'll bring this in and then we'll bring this one in just like that but as you can see when you put a piece of flexi truck down you can drop the join and move it around so if we went at that we need that to finish being straight, just there. We'll drag these. Make this one straight again. Now this is how difficult it can be. Because you need this to be nice and straight. And then we need to get rid of that little red line. You can see just there. Just like that. Now you see I can now if you were to stop that from happening, the way that piece of track moves around, you can now select it, right click it, and press glue. Now what that does is that glues that piece of track down and anything else connected to it cannot move anymore. So this cannot move up and down anymore, it can only move in and out. As if it was connected to a point. Just makes things a little bit easier when you're trying to move two pieces of flexi track together. So now we get another piece. We'll just make this a little bit shorter and give it a little bit of a curve. And then we'll pop that one on there. Oops. 
Now, as you can see, I'm just going to roughly guess that being in the right place. And we'll just connect that one to there. So, I'll just move these around a little bit. Just disconnect that. See, this is where it becomes quite difficult trying to get everything to work properly. So, you just move things around a little bit at a time. There we go. So, now we bring this up to there. And as you can see, I've now created almost a seven track fiddle yard. Now, as I carry on through here, I will just fast forward through me finishing off all the tracks on the fiddle yard. down after this next piece here that crosshair actually if I was to move it it disappears underneath that piece of track which becomes quite annoying sometimes but you just move it out of the way put it sort of roughly in the direction you want it to be and then you can move it over and as you can see you just keep tweaking it and tweaking it until you're happy with where it sits and there we go very quickly, within a few minutes, we now have a decent track plan. Now if you want to go into a bit more detail and put stations on and things like that, that's where you then go into your object libraries. Now there isn't a huge amount in here, especially for your double O. You've literally got double O signals and double O home scale though, and even in the scale though, it's not everything. It's just the platforms. There is user objects which you can go into download new items and it will give you all this here you just download it it's completely free um, just wait for it to finish you'll see loads of numbers in the corner when you click on this you'll see them will come from the corner there and that will start downloading i'm going to cancel that off because i've already done it and then i just you can just click in here and then this gives you a little bit of some of the stuff that you can get from these different people so when you select, for instance, select Pico, you get a few little selections of what Pico have. Um, and if you, for instance, go to Hornby, again, you get a few little bits and pieces. There's a lot, quite a lot in the Hornby section, I will admit, for different bits and pieces. So you can put different pieces on your layout and see what things look like. But this is what my main layout just and that is obviously what we've just created but what i created previously with a few extra buildings and stuff now i've actually printed this out as you can see i took took off the background now i've done that on purpose and i will show you why i've done that it's because when you want to print this off and maybe put it on your layout which is what i'm going to do in a moment when i show you you can actually go into here and you can see here where it says there's print scale now you can click on ratio click on one to one and this will print out your layout in everything and I, when i mean everything i mean it will print from here to here and from here to here from here to here from here to here it will print everything now to stop it from printing all this white space that's here because we don't need that we just need where the track is there is an option when you go to print so you can suppress empty pages now the reason for that is because then as you can see when you go through all these pages and you go through them there's these white pages that have got nothing on them whatsoever now what it will do is it will skip all those pages and just print where the track is and i will show you that in a moment and here we are as you can see We've got it all printed out here on paper. Um, just to show you, in the top corners there, you can see there are little 
markings they're on every single page in the corners now we use these to line up all the pieces of paper on the board I use drawing pins to hold them in place um, this is just so the paper doesn't move around it's a lot easier to put it on the thing and once you've got it on the boards it's a lot easier to see how your track plans working out whether you want to make any changes um, before you even start laying any sort of track putting pins in putting glue down putting cork down or anything like that you get a good representation of how your layer is going to look out and whether you've got the room for the rolling stock you want to run we'll now go over to me in a time lapse of me pinning it onto the board and we'll come back to you when I'm finished. So there we go, all printed out, all sorted, laid out on the boards. I've taped this together this time, just because it was a little bit easier, just because I was getting it on and off the boards for video purposes, but I would recommend you pin it down, it's a lot better, stops it moving around as much, but as you can see, makes a good representation of what the track is before you even have to go out and buy any. Now just here. As you can see, there's a little bit of an insight into what's going to be coming up in future videos. We've got some NCE switch it to decoders, some tortoise point motors, and some Woodland Scenics foam track bed. In the next video, I will be going through how I put this vaccine up. It didn't go that well, but you'll have to watch the video to see how it will, how it goes. I'll just pass it back to me at the computer. Hopefully in this video you've learnt a little bit about AnyRail, you've learnt a little bit about how to print it out on a one-to-one -one scale, get it on your baseboard so you've got a good representation of what your track plan is going to look like before you have to go out and buy any track. As you saw there, there's a little bit of a hint into what I'm getting at the minute. I will do a video in the next couple of weeks about me going to collect that and what it is and what's included in what I'm buying. I would like to say a massive thanks to Lee who I'm getting it from. If you've enjoyed watching, please hit that subscribe button. You can also hit the little bell notification which will give you a notification every time I bring out over a new layout update or a new video. If you do have any comments on the video, please do leave them below. I will get do my best to reply to every comment that I've got on my videos. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.